uh, I will put it on YouTube for us. And so um, this uh, virtual paint out and uh, uh, critique will be on, on Facebook. Uh, right now we have 27 people, which is very cool, 28. Um, and uh, what, when we go to this, um, Steve's uh, face will be right in the middle of the screen. You'll be able to see all the paintings and, and do all that. I think we'll do most of the discussion at the end. Um, we're gonna let Steve go through them since we have so many different paintings. And then we'll come back and have discussion. If you have questions about your own paintings and things like that, um, then we'll do them at the end. Um, so, but please put, put any kind of comments in the chats all right, so I'm gonna unmute Steve. Thanks, Mary. Thank you everybody for, for coming here. I am going to be sharing uh, Facebook, uh, my Facebook screen. So this is Pogo. Uh, when I first saw this, it, it just reminded me of my uh, architectural illustration days. <laughs> we did a lot of railings, and this is a, a really good rendering of, of a, of a railing near Chicago. And um, as, as far as the, uh, and I, let, let me back up a, a minute. The, the subject that I, I threw out um, early this morning, or Mary copied it out, I don't know if everybody had seen it, but the, um, was, the challenge was to find the lines within your scene capture those lines and use those to direct the viewer to the, uh, the center of interest. And certainly within most of these, I've been seeing a lot of lines and a lot of good centers of interest. Overall, this is, this is a, uh, a city scene, just going way back. You're seeing the city skyline. The, the most dramatic, Thing I see it is the railing. So, Tobin, watch watch whatever you're doing is uh, if it has the highest contrast up against the lightest light. Um, that typically is going to be your center of interest. And um, let me annotate some of this as I go. Um, so the the uh, center of interest that I see that I'm constantly looking at is the highest contrast between this lightest light and this darkest dark. So my eye is constantly going back here. I don't know if you wanted me to do that, but that's where my eye is going and it's, 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 uh, it's falling there. Um, beautiful. Overall, beautiful uh, treatment of the landscape of the, uh, the horizon. Uh, you've got some good grays, very subtle uh, shading, nice cool, overall coolness back there. That's pushing the horizon way back. But again, the center of interest for me is this area right in here where it's the highest contrast, the sharpest edge, the lightest light up against the darkest dark, okay? Just watch that. Next, we will go into a beautiful piece as far as the uh, capturing the atmospheric perspective. You've got diminished sizes of, of objects within the scene. Um, watch the, the closeness of splitting the, the composition in half. You're, you're seeing you know, just as much sky or close to sky as, as the ground. Um, the, uh, the leading lines is, is a really good tool as far as, uh, let me show this, this, this leading line right in here is, is just a beautiful element that just brings me right up into this house area. Um, good, strong leading lines for the, uh, these, these all shapes. Uh, if you do have sky in this area, just use the sky area to also create leading lines that also come together to your center of interest. Uh, the center of interest is pretty much either the house or this tree back in here. Um, 
you know, again, watch watch the composition for keeping everything in the in this in the center. But um, overall, it's it's a it's a really nice piece. That was Elizabeth Gear. Liz, okay. And uh, yeah, and anybody, if you want to ask questions, please put them in the chat. Okay, good. Uh, is this Coons? Yep. Coon. This is looking um, a very interesting perspective. You're looking down, looks like from a balcony, down to the uh, down to the ground. Um, I like the big shapes. He's he's given me interesting shapes in here. Um, as far as uh, a center of interest, anytime you have a person uh, or or an animal in there, uh, that's typically going to be your center of interest. So know that for a fact and use that within your design. Um, if, if this person was here, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a good placement as far as one third, two thirds. Um, and um, because of the size of the person, this uh, area right in here is, is for me, the center of interest. Uh, I like how you treated the, the reflection in the, in the water on the, on, the, on the path and um, watch watch for any opportunity where you can change temperature within your piece. Uh, I love how you warmed up the grass right in here, right next to the person and you cooled off this area and cooled off here and, and then cooled off up in here. You, you gave me a good temperature change to um, to the center of interest here. This tree is a really nice design element, kind of framing that that right right hand side. Um, and I like the, the three point perspective you've got here. Um, it's very well designed and uh, just, again, look for opportunity to cool off the warmth that you have maybe up in this road and emphasize the warmth Again, next to your center of interest. Okay, good. Let's move on. Is this is this helpful? Are, are we not? If you're if you're in agreement. <laughs> okay, so here's the here's the the uh, point of view. That's good. Good effort. Nice underpainting. Good. Nancy, I think she had a, a zoom in on this piece. Uh, maybe not, maybe that's a little bit later. Great job, Nancy. I love the, um, now this is from a photograph, she said. Um, but I love the, um, the big shapes in here. Um, and anytime you can have, and here's the big shapes. One, two, and then this is three. So overall, she's she's got her design limited to three big shapes. Uh, good use of, of linear perspective in the design. This is definitely going back in, uh, in perspective. And um, again, not clearly finished, but um, a great start. Um, I love the line in here. Uh, try to find ways of, you know, this is so straight. Um, this line here is so straight that uh, I'm sure you're going to find little little ways of breaking that up, bringing maybe this blue up up into some little patches of of the uh, of the water, and then the linear perspective is is just those shapes getting smaller and smaller as you get further and further back. So, and again, she saved her warmest warms for the foreground and cooling those off as they go back up. Again, giving that atmospheric perspective uh, to this nice scene. She's saving her 
this little bloom right here looks like is going to be her center of interest. All right, good. How do I join? You got to go on uh, Facebook. Yeah. Mary sent out an email. Was, I'll send it to you, Bobby. Yeah. Oh, okay. Bobby wants to join. I didn't know you could hear me. Yeah. <laughs> Do you see my face? No. Oh, okay. Lori. Like those uh, slippers. <laughs> yeah, Mary, if you could send Bobby. <laughs> this is a, a beautiful little uh, painting, Lori. Um, it's it's uh, clearly centered on the chair. And um, when I first saw this, I go, oh, this is a, a really nice, like, nice little sketch. But I'm looking at it further and further, and it's just reminding me. Um, I'll just come it's, it's just reminding me of, uh, of uh, finding what's it. I call it what's it's to um, include in your painting. So a what's it is uh, the viewer is looking at the painting and they're looking at it and they're seeing what, you know, is clearly uh, the center of interest is the chair. But the hero of this, this painting, I think, is the pillow. And, and she's giving us a little bit of character within that pillow of a, uh, a little bent corner. And it's just, to me, it's just a nice, funny, humorous element of that pillow. It's, it's just has the weight of that pillow pushing that corner down and that little corner is being exposed. So look for those little what's it's within your painting and, and those opportunities that you can show whether it's humor or um, the character of that chair or that pillow itself. It looks like a well-used pillow. And um, I have a, a pillow just like that. So it just brought back a really fond memory. So great job, Lori. Okay, let's go on. This is Muriel's. Uh, this is her scene out her window, and this is the painting. Oh, I love the I love the the reflections you got in here in the in the water. Um, I love the line that you have coming through this. Uh, let me let me back up here. Um, so this line right in here, it's it's giving us a nice flow, and then it's it, you're using this this darker area up in here as as kind of a a, a nautilus type shape where we're bringing down and the color that you used in here is just spectacular. Um, I love the purple shadows in the shadows in here. Up against this this warmth of the of the glow of the grass, um, to me this is this is the center of interest right in here. Um, if that is the center of interest, uh, just beef that up even more, and and tone down maybe the contrast between the the lighter greens and and the and the darks that you have up in here. Um, this is a this area right in here is a uh, uh, supporting cast member, more or less. Um, it's it's drawing my eye up in here, and it's taking away from the from the hero. So maybe w one of your jobs is to to tone down this area, this contrast, uh, because it's taking away from the beauty of what you have right in here. I love how you treated this grass. Anytime you have grass, um, you know, treat it as, as a shape first, but then look for the little, little um, 
areas that you can you can create shapes within shapes. Highlights, uh, typically there's always yellow ochre in some grass um, that'll warm up areas like that. Good job, Miriam. Uh, let me clear that. Sandra, this this piece is a. Uh, it looks like a one of those urban sketches uh, that I'm seeing quite often. Uh, looks like she's used some watercolor uh, pens for this sketch. It's a nice 2D design. 2D meaning it's kind of a flat perspective, straight on. You're seeing those those uh, those shapes. Um, having used pens before, watercolor pens, um, they're kind of hard to to manage big wash areas. But you're, you know, I, I see evidence of. Let me try to get a different color here. Uh, I'm seeing evidence of of you have a nice thicker pen um, right in here. So um, try to keep those uh, big areas uh, kind of a, as, a, as a wash. When you're covering um, like this dark doorway right in here, um, watch the highlights, you know, watch the, the middle values. Uh, and use those opportunities to push objects back or bring those and, and allow things to come forward. And again, the line work is, is 2D, so there's not much in here as far as perspective, but um, my eye itself goes to this area right in here, just because of the high contrast and uh, of, of this Certainly this line here is giving me an area to look at. Um, if things are going off the page, um, treat that as a little less, a little more or less detail than, than, um, than the, where you want us to really focus in on. Um, which I think could be this doorway as well, so. You know, but good job, Sandra. All right, let's move on. Okay, this is Liz. Uh, she, this is her scene here, and this is uh, the painting. Great job, Liz, in um, giving us uh, a. Um, a really strong diagonal. Look at that diagonal coming straight through here. I like how you unified the, the building with with the ground line. Um, just give it gave us a nice indication of of a building being there, but the value is very close to the ground line itself. Anytime you have a strong diagonal like this, it's it's a it's a uh, very emotional, very uh, energized design. I love that you offset that angle with with the uh, the slanted trees, and then you know the 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 array of angles on these trees is is really well done. Uh, you you gave us a really nice secondary shape back in here that this defines the uh, the distant trees. Um, again, it's probably done in an hour, hour, hour and a half, maybe, uh, maybe even less. But um, if you were to take this further, maybe even define some of these sky holes a little more clearly and, uh, and, uh, and I think that's, that's mainly all you would need. You could probably get a little more detail in the foreground in here. But this is a really nice piece. Okay, Mary. 
<laughs> Great job, Mary. This is this is not mine. Who did? Oh, this is Andreas. Andreas. Um, I love the line in this one in that it's. Um, No, Look at this you're overall you're arc you're right you're in here. You're unmuted. Oh, and then okay. and then this line right in here. And it's it's giving us a nice tangent to look at for her the hero of of, her, of this painting, which is this this floral um, shape right in here, this flower. Um, and again, watch watch the highest contrast of this leaf up against that dark. My eye is is going to here, and it's bouncing over to here because this is it wants to. My eye wants to live here, but it's conflicting with this uh, this higher contrast right in here. Um, and I love how you treated the softness of these. Uh, this other area, good good brushwork, good use of paint, um, great great painting. I love it. Hi everybody, this is Bobby. Hi Bobby, we're going to take questions and things afterward. Okay. Yep. If you would, um, well anyway. Who, who did that one? Okay. <laughs> Julie. Um, well, let me let me go back to mine and I'll just show you what what I was this is what I was looking at and I was I was intrigued by the, the the flow of these flowers up against these flowers in here um, so it was it was this arc and then this arc in here I liked the uh, the light coming in on these leaves going to the shadow over on this side. So that's that's what I was really looking at. Um, and you know in, in the design I use that same arc um, going this way and then this way. And then I wanted the overall light on the leaves going to the dark uh, and a kind of a neutral background. Um, we have to restart the computer to enable the video is my guess. So that's 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 what my goal it was for this uh, for this piece. Um, Julie is a scene from her 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 yard. Um, watch Julie, watch when when whenever you're doing uh, this scene. It's good angle here, but you're coming awfully close to the edge, and then you're bringing us back. Um, the isolation of this element right in here is 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 a natural for a center of interest, but you're not giving us enough detail um, to really hold our eye. Um, I love this this curve you got going. And I so want more detail in this little statue, uh, but you're not giving it to me. And my eye goes up to here. But it's the contrast between the, the pot, the darkness of that pot, and that lightness of that. Um. So you, you've given me some good, good elements to keep me in here, but it's not giving me enough information. Um, good verticals in here. Uh, I like how you did the tree, but this pot, and I, you know, to, for me, that's where, where I'm, my eye is going. Just be aware of that. Um, you know, you could use temperature if you wanted to warm this area up more. Use bring some of this warmth over here, over into here. Uh, tone this person, this person, this object down. Because um, that's, that's where my eye is going. But I, I want, want it to live here. Um, okay, good. Jerry, this looks like Michigan. 
<laughs> it's his backyard. This, <laughs> it's got a corn crib in there. Um, on gray days, like we were having here, except for De uh, Deborah, <laughs> I think she's got the only son. On these gray days, uh, it's all about color saturation because the cloud is giving us beautiful color and the sun is not shining on objects that is just blowing everything out. And you, of course you don't have the harsh, sh you know, cool shadows that the sun is uh, reflecting and then the, the blue sky is reflecting in, in the shadows. So for these gray days, uh, empties, uh, saturate your color, saturate the colors a little bit more than, than, than you feel comfortable with. Um, I love the sky that you have up in here and the tree treatment that you did is, is really well done. Um, you could emphasize this barn by giving it, you know, even more pure color than, than you have. It's a it's an object that's close to us, so you, you know you can you can afford a little more pure color. That'll separate that barn away from the uh, these um, these distant trees a little bit more. Um, and then this little corn crib uh, it looks like. Um, watch the perspective on this. Uh, your eye, you're giving me clues as to where your visual is at on this. Um, you're, you're almost eye level with, with this uh, roof line. Uh, everything else is, is uh, curving up. Um, so watch, watch the perspective on this a little bit. And then the, the, the dark grass, um, I'm seeing is a little bit too dark. It could be, you know, this plane of this grass is getting, uh, should be getting more light on than this vertical of this, this barn. So watch, watch the value change uh, in, th in this ground. Um, so you've got a ground plane that's flat that's perpendicular to the sky, it should be receiving a little more light um, versus the vertical of this barn, which is, you know, should be a little darker, but uh, a little more brighter in color. And then these distant trees, I love how you, you treated those, but uh, good job, Jerry. Let me clear that. Yeah. Shannon, this looks like her, her first plein air piece. Um, I love how you did this, uh, what looks like straw. Uh, my eye immediately went, goes there. And, uh, and just be, pay attention to how why it goes there, it's because of the contrast of this light up against this dark. Then my eye goes up to here and it's, it's following this shape right in here. Uh, high contrast, sharpest edge. So it's, it's ping-ponging back and forth between this grill cover and, and this uh, what looks like straw or hay. Um, so watch, watch, you know, pick one or the other. If, if, if the straw is, is your center of interest, leave that alone and then maybe mute down this a little bit, soften up some edges. Um, watch your darks. You're going maybe too dark too soon. Uh, save those darks for, uh, for the very end. This dark and this dark are the same. It should not be the same. Um, anytime you, you get this dark in the background, it's bringing that dark for, uh, forward. It's bringing that shape forward. So 
use a little more atmospheric perspective. Gray, that was darks down way back in here. Okay, good. How are we doing on time? We're about halfway there. Yep. This is Deborah. Deborah's got a sunny, nice sunny day, I saw. <laughs> She's in uh, St. Croix. This is uh, a scene out her window. And um, it's, it's a, it's a, it captures the moment, Deborah. Good job in capturing the, the color. I like the color of this. Watch the perspective of this. You're, you're, it's, this wall right in here is showing me that it's, it's like a 90 degree wall but then you, you shift perspective and, and you're not following the, the perspective um, correctly. Uh, so watch, you know, th this awning should be up in here. Everything is, should be pointing to, to a horizon line, which I'm thinking is, is gonna be like right in here. Um, and then every line should be pointing to to a uh, vanishing point like that. Um, so watch your perspective and your drawing. Um, good shapes overall, good shapes, good definition of, of, uh, of your, um, of, the, of the edges right in here. The perspective is is the thing that's uh, I would I would say you need to work on a little bit more. Get that drawing down first, and then um, yeah, it'll it'll all fill in for you. This is Deborah's uh, Deborah's watercolor. Looks like from her uh, window. Good job, Deborah. This is um, this is a, a really nice sketch, capturing the the, the scene. Uh, the perspective is all really good. Um, however, as as you come up closer, things are going to get flatter and flatter as you get further and further up. Um, cars are not easy to do, especially on, on, on a sketch like this uh, in, in this amount of time. So you did, a, you did a really good job. Watch the, the, the warmth that you have up in here. These, these houses are way out further in the distance. Uh, cool those off and then keep your warmth for, you know, for your foreground in here. Uh, the, the warmth of these homes, you, whether they are this color or not, is is bringing them forward, uh, and and uh, to me the flags are the center of interests. So, just because you have a lot of detail in those flags, and that's that's where my eyes are anchoring. Um, but overall, it's 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 a, a really good. Good sketch. Good job. When you when you do a painting like this, uh, pay attention to where your eyes are going in the scene. Nine times out of ten, where your eyes are falling, that's going to be, or should be, your center of interest. Um, if it's not, make those choices in your design, in your your temperature ranges and color uh, and use whatever we have as artists um, to point people to those those uh, those centers of interest. All right, good job. Okay, and here's her here's her scene. Good. And those flags are clearly the center. <laughs> are drawing the most attention. Richard, excellent job, sir. This is, um, 
this is a really well designed and, and painted um, painting. The, um, again, as you're looking at this, pay attention to where your eyes are going. Um, I wanna live up in here, but I keep being pulled down in here uh, just because of the detail and the, and the, and the uh, active brushwork in this, in this uh, landscape, this warmth you got going here. Um, I like the warmth that you have out in here from the light. You've kind of flipped it on us as far as, and this isn't easy to do, You're, you've created a warm spot out in here. And can you guys see the cursor? Okay. So you've created a nice warm spot right out in here and you've, you've given the coolness to the close shapes up in here. Uh, typically you would want that flipped, but the, in this case it works. Uh, you've given us clues, enough clues to, to tell us that this is far out in the distance and the, and the warm is enough grade that it's, supporting that 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 fact you've given us some good lines that lead us along this path and then this tree kind of brings us out in here so i'm kind of living way out in here which is a really nice place to be um, and good shapes good big shapes variety of shapes big shape small shapes uh, I tell this, tell my students, uh, look for those big continents of shapes and little islands. Um, it's a really good way of, of capturing organic scenes. Um, and then she's given us a nice big shape here. Excellent job, Richard. This one would sell nicely. <laughs> And this is Susan. Susan, great job of giving us some atmosphere to look at on this cold, rainy day. Uh, you've given us some really good, uh, cool shapes way back in here. Nice middle ground of shapes. And you're warming up the shapes to, to tell us that this is now in the front and the foreground. Um, nice el framing element of this tree. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this area right in here as possibly a center of interest. But then anytime you go in with architectural treatment, whether it's a bench or a home, um, I would pick one of these as being your center of interest because right now it's it's kind of going back and forth between the house, which is well painted, uh, just giving us just enough information. Um, the contrast between this this pond of water and this is. Um, you know, a nice area. So you could pick one and, you know, diminish the other. Good job, Susan. Clear that. Okay, here's what where she was looking at. I liked how you, okay, it wasn't a pond, it was a lake. <laughs> and I like how you move the the uh, the bench to your liking to the the design. Good job, Cynthia. Great, great job here, Cynthia. I love how you uh, are so free with your your shapes and your brushes. Um, this is this is really what plein air painting should be. Um, 
you've captured the freedom of, of the scene. Nice big shapes. This shape connecting up with this shape. And then a leading line coming in here. Um, not sure if this is done or not, but if you were to take this further, my eye wants to live down in here just because of the high contrast. Right in here, but it's going up to this house. Um, so there's, it's, it's kind of ping ponging back between it's down in here and up in here. So if you were to take this further, either diminish some of the contrast, soften up some of the contrast between the rocks and uh, the home, or leave the home the way it is. And, um, but I'm, I'm loving, you know, these big shapes. And the freedom, of, you, you just throw that paint down. Good job. Steve, I count 12 more. Oh, okay. Okay, here's the scene. This is a um, nice, nice painting of, of a, a distant um, field. With a little, nice little town in, in the background. Um, watch the, the warmth that you have up in here. The, the warmth and the detail that you have up in here is really bringing this object, whether it's buildings, clusters of buildings, forward. Uh, take, take the opportunity to cool that down. Um, you've got some really nice cools in the distance here. Uh, bring some of that coolness back up into those buildings. I love the warmth that you have in, in, this, in this close area. Ask yourself, is this, if this uh, water, bo body of water is really adding to the design, this close to the bottom, uh, question that. Um, because that something that close, that change of, of shape, that close to the bottom really doesn't add much to the overall design. I like the, the, the line and the flow of this. Um, of this piece. Okay, yeah, see that, that being that close to the bottom just distracts from, uh, from the overall design. Okay, Barbara. Uh, That's a nice square format. This is giving us uh, good separation of space in here from here to here. Um, look at the contrast of, you know, my eye goes right right to this space just because of that contrast between the, the dark red and the, and the white and the hard edge you have right there. Um, just be aware of where your eyes are going. If, if you don't want that to be the center of interest, um, Soften that down. I love this, this effect of softness you, you've given me. These are really nice shapes right in here. Good job. Virginia, wow, doom and gloom. <laughs> this is, well executed, Virginia, good job. Um, I love how you treated the softness of these, this, these buildings here, good perspective. Um, good overall shapes down in here, reflections are nice. Wet rainy day like we have today. Uh, I love how you treated the, the, the also the, um, Streetlights, good job. Again, notice where your eyes are going. You know, the contrast, anytime you have signs, 
Um, that's typically where your eye is going to go. Um, we like to read and see those shapes. So that's your center of interest, right, right in there. Um, and everything else supports that. So good job, Virginia. Robin, good lines, good, good lines in this one, Robin. You've given me some good leading lines coming in, but you didn't give me a, a strong enough center of interest. Um, you know, I'm, my eye is going here, it's going over here, it's going here, and it's gonna end up probably here or here. Um, again, you guys be the judge. If, if, if you see something is taking away from your center of interest, um, you know, if you don't want this area, whether it's as beautiful a paint stroke as that is, if it's, if it's too much, if, if this is where you want the eye to go, um, you, you have to tone that down. So overall good tree shapes up in here. Um, watch taking these leaves <clears throat> and not exiting the painting. Um, don't be shy of the edge of the painting. Um, take, take some of those leaves right up off the, the edge of the painting. Um, and, and rather than, you know, staying away from the edge. Um, okay, a couple more here. Ray, this is a, a scene often from, uh, looks like, like North Avenue Beach area, uh, looking at the skyline and a nice crashing wave. Um, good shapes, Ray. And, um, but watch if you can, um, this vertical element of the wave is almost too vertical. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's echoing the shape of, <laughs> of the Hancock, believe it or not, but it's, uh, whether you want, wanted that or, or not, it's, it's a, my eye is constantly going to here, and it almost looks unnatural. So watch those, those straight shapes that nature makes. Um, you can get a nice, a nice curve right in here. Um, but I love, I love the, the distribution of big shapes. One, two, three, and then four. Good job, Ray. This is Yolana. She's in Florida. Um, overall, really good feeling to this. Uh, a lot of good feeling of light. Um, you have no problem in capturing the light. I love the way you treated the sky too, and the birds. Uh, really well done. Um, just make sure when you when you're adding the um, your sh shade and shadows, uh, you have a good light, not light, but shadow pattern that captures and maybe unifies the sameness of of the shadows within that, um, so that you have a nice shadow pattern shape that helps support all this beautiful light you have in here. So you can go a little bit, maybe a little darker on their shade areas, and that'll make your the light even more intense. So good job, Yolanda. Okay, and here's, here's uh, Nancy's again. Mary, wow, this is a, a beautiful piece. Uh, 
I love I love the the composition number one. Just look at look at how simple this is. It's just got really simple shapes, subtle indication of objects way out in the distance, um, just enough detail to give us the story, and and she finishes it well. Um, as far as a center of interest, again, my eye is, is going to the people. Um, when you're doing people, uh, do them as equally as confident as you do buildings. Uh, I love great, great perspective. Um, do them, um, you know, keep them simple as well. Um, overall, great building, great, great color, great value. Good job. Bobby, I love this piece. Um, this is a piece Bobby did, and um, Clearly, the center of interest is is going to be the barn. Um, that is the the key player in here, and it's just supported by really interesting shapes. I love that. And then the angle and flow of this this piece um, has got some really good elements uh, in this as well. Good shadow shape. Um, and again, good big continents and little islands of sky and clouds. Yep. Um, any suggestions would be um, use, again, talking of line, use the lines within the land, the, the, the grass, you know, grass itself can be um, very uh, chaotic, but you as the artist need to find the opportunity to create lines within that chaos to redirect the, the viewer's eye back to the center of interest, which is the barn itself. And within this overall red barn, you know, I think there's little elements of areas where you could just give us a little more red uh, in certain areas. Um, but overall, I love it. You know, maybe, maybe bring some of the dark grass shapes up into the light. And then you've got the light grass into the darkness of the red. Um, but maybe, maybe el like an element of, of light or dark bringing the viewer back up into here would be my only, uh, only uh, input. Steve, we have hit one o'clock. Can everybody stay for another uh, maybe 15 minutes? We have five more. Okay. Karen. Good job, Karen. I love this piece. Um, this is probably the last, oh, the last cruise ship. Um, I love how you did the birds, too. This is a gorgeous piece. Uh, good shadow shapes in here in the foreground. The way you treated the people are, are excellent. Um, watch the tangent of the cloud up against the top of the, the ship, you know, maybe bring it down a little lower. Um, Cause it looks like this is coming right out the top of the ship and, and maybe it is, but it looks like a cloud. Uh, and I love how you treated the palm trees and everything about it. It's really good. Good job. Fabiola, wow, that captures the, the, the mood of the day. Um, 
great use of, of cools and, and warms. Um, really nice, elegant design, real simple. Um, but yeah, look at that. You know, distribution of space. Uh, and then she brings some light, this light down in here. Um, good job. Okay, I think that was Robin's um, reference photo. Junior. Great job, Junior. Now I ask myself, where is my eye going? You know, it's 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 going to these these el this element right here, certainly the owl, and then the bench. It's it's going back and forth. Um, I like the treatment of the owl, and then it's coming up like that. Um, Good leading lines as far as where things are going. Um, putting something like this, even though the I'm a huge Cub fan myself, this low in the in the in the piece. Just ask yourself, you know, if it's that important, you know, why is it that low? Um, or ask yourself, is it even needed? Um, but overall, good job, Junior. And is this, whose is this? Um, Mary Longs. Oh, this is yours, Mary. <laughs> good job, Mary. I love, I love how you, you have the, um, Great atmospheric perspective back in here. Um, try to find the, these shapes as as um, you're giving me maybe too many shapes. You know, find that unification uh, of of shapes. Um, Good line work in here. And then the trees in the foreground. I think, I think if you could simplify the overall shapes themselves into maybe three or four, the most five big shapes. So uh, this looks like snow patches on on grass. You know, give me a a one shape here, a two shape, and a three shape. Okay, and then within those shapes, use temperature to define uh, the differences of of objects within those shapes. And you and you're you're doing it here with the buildings, and the water. Um, and maybe too much in the grass. So really look for those, those few big shapes and then come in with elements that split and connect up those shapes with those trees. But good job, good job in, in really pushing that distance. So St Steve, thank you. We okay. are at the end here. Okay. I'm just going to unmute people, um, but to ask if anyone wants to make a, um, uh, a, a have any questions or anything, and um, we'll unshare the screen here. There you go. Um, yeah, so do, does anyone have questions that they'd like to ask? You may be muted. You may have muted yourself. So. Unmute yourself if you have a question. Um, I have a question for Steve. Yeah. 
Lori here on, hey, on Lori. mine. Should, should I have made that side that's dark? I mean, it's not, I know it's more of a study, but um, the side that's dark on the chair should, oh, I took my picture off. Should I have, um, should I have made that as dark as the arm of the chair? Uh, let me go back to okay. Lori's. Okay, you're you're Lori. Uh, okay, Lori. Now, what was your question? I, I got your your your. So, so the shadow on the if you're looking at it on the right side by the yep. plant. Should I have made that as dark as the dark arms of the chair? No. Okay. No, because the dark arms really stand out um, from that. Let me see if I can share the screen. So we're talking about this shadow in here. Yeah is um, the shadow should not be dark as dark as the arms, you know, and the legs of the chair. Um, depending on the light you have in the room, you're gonna get a f kind of a fill light in this. This is a, a darker wood that, um, you know, would stand out a little darker than, than the shadow. Okie doke. You know, I kind of think we may not be able to go back to all the paintings, or but you may want to talk to Steve individually yeah. um, about some of these if you have real questions. Um, and I'm wondering, um, you know, maybe as a raise of hands, uh, um, has with a yes has this been valuable yeah all yeah. right <laughs> yeah. sure yes Good. And, and i think i think the hearing the critique from from uh, of other pe people's paintings kind of triggers um new ideas new approaches new insight into your own work so it's it's really helpful and i think that's why we do these these critique sessions, you know, in the field, uh, this is a little bit, uh, I think it's a little more, more data, more information, uh, just because you're seeing some annotations and some little details that I'm talking about. But, um, um, so in one sense, it's, you're getting a lot more information um, than out in the field even. So, uh, I think it, it's all working well. So Steve, thank you so much for doing this for us. I, I found it personally very helpful to hear all the different kinds cool. of comments. Well, good. Um, good. I'm going to uh, say goodbye to everyone at this point. I think we're at uh, an hour and 10 minutes and that's probably plenty. Um, and uh, can I just do, you can uh, one more throw of hands. Would you like to do this next Saturday? Yes. Yes. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Thanks, Steve, so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.